Okay. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. So I'm looking at your bio here. You don't have a book, right? This is just a report we're going to be talking about? It's a report we're going to be talking about. That's right. Okay. So you're a research analyst at CNA's Center for Stability. What is CNA? Uh, CNA uh, used to stand for the Center for Naval Analysis, um, but it doesn't actually stand for anything anymore. We're just the CNA Corporation. But we do, uh, we essentially do national security uh, analysis and analysis of things that have sort of a public interest in the United States. Okay, is this a private organization or a government organization? No, it's a it's a nonpartisan um, nonprofit located in D.C. that does analysis for the government. So we're actually an FFRDC, so we're a federally funded research and development center, um, much like RAND. Uh, so RAND is the FFRDC, for example, for the Army. We're the FFRDC for the Navy and the Marine Corps. All right. Well, I've never heard of it, so this will be a learning experience for me. And I'm just kind of looking over your bio here. It's a very long and in-depth bio, so I want to make sure we're talking about the right thing. Uh, the report that we're going to be talking about is... Why don't you just explain what the, uh, what the report is? Sure. So the report that we're going to be talking about is about racial extremism in the military. Um, and in a lot of ways, it was actually prompted by the events of January 6th. Um, so January 6th, I think, was a, an opportunity. Um, it was an eye-opening, I think, experience for a lot of people and sort of forced a reckoning. Um, one of the things that we learned in the wake of January 6th was that um, a disturbing percentage of the people who participated that day had some kind of a background, um, uh, uh, some sort of military experience. So 12% of those charged had either were active duty military or were veterans. Um, and this has prompted the Department of Defense, but also I think the country to really think about what it means to have extremism in the military. Um, and that was the, one of the things that prompted us to think about um, extremism in the military. In this particular report, we didn't look at all the kinds of extremism. There's, there are dozens of kinds of extremism, many of which were present on January 6th. We looked at one specific kind of extremism, racial extremism, and then and that wrote about um, ways to, that the United States government might think about tackling the problem of racial extremism in the military. How did racial extremism show itself on January 6th? I'm not sure that racial extremism was the sort of dominant thread of extremism that we saw that day. Um, but again, the the prompt was really to think about extremism in the military. And when we started to look at extremism within military populations, it became really clear to us that racial extremism was a significant problem. Um, you know, as I said, there's there are lots of kinds of extremism in America, lots of kinds of violent extremism. We see them on both the left and the right. Um, you know, we have things on the left like the uh, environmental extremism and, and violent environmental extremism. And then um, uh, we and we have some things on the right that we've seen as well. For example, anti-abortion extremism and violent anti-abortion extremism. We don't see either of those represented significant in significant numbers in the military. But what we started to what occurred to us as we were doing our research is that racial extremism is a bigger piece of that pie. And so if you're going to sort of our idea here was to kind of understand how to tackle extremism. It wasn't going to be a one size fits all problem. And so we wanted to, to write a report that would tackle a bigger piece of the pie. And that's why we chose to focus on racial extremism. OK, can we define that just a little bit for people that might not understand? We've all heard the term extremism, but to me, extremism can be subjective depending on who's considering it to be extreme. Is there a, a defined spot on the chart that somebody goes over the line and is now considered an extremist? Yeah, so this is a great question. And this is this is a real problem um, for those of us who are trying to research these topics. The Department of Defense doesn't have a definition of extremism. They have what uh, a definition or a definition of extremist activities. So they have a definition of activities that are considered extremist and consequently prohibited. And actually, within the past two weeks, the Department of Defense released a report um, and refined that, that definition of extremist activities, providing much more granular detail about what kinds of things would be permitted and not permitted. Um, for the purposes of, of our report, we wanted to talk about racial extremism. And one of the things we wanted to do was actually expand, expand the definition a little bit. Um, 
in our report, we made the argument that that there's a really great model that the Department of Defense uses to think about the problem of sexual assaults and sexual harassment. And the model is called the continuum of harm. And what the Department of Defense has said is, we need to acknowledge that there's an entire continuum of behaviors that's problematic. This starts with sexist jokes, moves through sexual harassment, sex-based discrimination, and includes sort of the more violent, physically violent activities such as sexual assault and rape. And what we said in our report was that you could think of, you could use that model to understand the problem of racial extremism in the military. That we have we have a problem with racist jokes and race racial race-based harassment, race-based discrimination, and then finally culminating in acts of of um, ra racially motivated violence, violent extremism. And so it's not it's not there's no perfect definition of extremism. You're you're right to point out that it's very subjective. In our particular report, we try to address all of those, understanding that acts of racially motivated violence. <clears throat> are part of a, exist on a continuum that include more than just racially based violence. Okay, how um, racially diverse is the military at this point? Um, I don't have the statistics on that right in front of me, but I do know that um, racial um, diversity within the military is different within the enlisted ranks and within the officer ranks. So if I think about the last numbers I saw, um, I think that uh, my, my understanding is that black Americans in the enlisted ranks of the military are represented at a higher rate than in the U.S. population. But those numbers drop off as we as we um, as we move up through the ranks and we see uh, lower numbers of uh, black Americans in higher in positions of higher leadership or authority than we do in the general population. OK, what about in terms of gender? Is that same kind of statistics apply to women? I'm not sure. We didn't look at gender. We didn't focus on gender in this particular report. We focused on racial extremism. And so most of the data we pulled was related to race. Well, let's talk about the report, actually. What were the findings in the report? So the report was really focused on this question of, of what can be done to address this problem. And the idea was that you don't need to reinvent the wheel to address this problem, right? We could learn from the past. Now, the military has not done a perfect job of addressing the problem of sexual harassment and sexual assault. Um, there have been a lot of very justified critiques of the approach it's taken, and it, it certainly hasn't solved the problem yet. But it has learned a lot in tackling that problem over the last 20 years. And so our objective was to extract some important lessons or key takeaways that we could take from the problem of sexual harassment and sexual assault and apply to this problem of racial extremism. So I'll give you one example. One of the things that the Department of Defense has done to address the problem of sexual harassment, sexual assault, has been to work really hard to develop a better reporting system. We've known for a long time that not all acts of harassment, sexual harassment, and sexual assault get reported. And the Department of Defense has worked really hard to develop a better, it's, it still isn't perfect, but a better system for collecting that data. And as a consequence, the Department of Defense has more information now than it did, say, 10 years ago on how serious of a problem this is, how many people are being victimized, what those attacks and assaults are looking like. Um, and so one of the things that we, we suggest in the report is to, is, to, is to borrow that system, take a system, develop a system much like that system, and create a way for people to report acts of race-based discrimination and harassment and violence. Right now, the Department of Defense has has very little understanding of how serious a problem this is because there's simply no systematic data collected on it. We don't know how serious a problem extremism in the military is because um, we're not collecting statistics on it yearly. And so borrowing this reporting system would be a way to start collect, to collect data on this to really understand the size and the scope of the problem so that you could design the right solutions. I know in civilian life, sexual assaults and sexual harassments go more unreported than reported. At least they used to be. I think now with Me Too, uh, it's, it's getting better. Do you think there's a higher degree of that in the military where people don't want to risk their, their position, their rank, uh, causing problems with other, with other military personnel? I mean, do you think the, uh, that idea is amplified in a military environment? 
I'm not sure if it's amplified in a military environment, but in, in doing the research to look at that system and to think about whether or not it would apply to the problem of racial extremism, we did find a lot of analysis sort of uh, highlighting and outlining some of the challenges that military personnel face in reporting. You've, and you've mentioned some of this just now, right? Military personnel are really uh, concerned about, in times, disrupting the cohesion of their unit. Um, they're, they might be accused of betraying a colleague. Um, they might be reporting something to a senior officer who's, who is also a friend, who might be friends or friendly with the, with the accused. Um, these are all problems that uh, the military is working to address and has worked to address to varying degrees. But all of these will also be problems for people who might want to report acts of racial discrimination or racial violence. It will still be the case that it's disruptive to the unit or that you might be reporting to someone who's friends with the accused. Or, and, and so these sort of systemic problems, uh, we can see them in both cases. Uh, last question, and then we got to wrap it up. Who is going to be looking at this report? If the report is finished? That's correct. OK, so who's going to be looking at it? We're hoping to, we have shared the report publicly. It's available on our website. Um, so you can actually find it online. It's at www.cna.org. You just click on our research. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find two reports on racial extremism in the military. One is a, a lengthier research product that's about 60 pages and one is a, a five page summary. Um, we've also shared these reports with folks within the Department of Defense, um, uh, with public health officials who think about how to how to deal with problems of, of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and racial extremism. Um, our hope is really to reach the policymakers and the and the DoD officials who are making the decisions um, that will that will that will hopefully begin to to address these problems and make the military a really safe and healthy place for everybody who's who's uh, made these sacrifices to serve our country. Well, we do have to wind this down. We are out of time. Thank you so much for coming on. Can you give out the website one more time, please? Sure. It's www.cna.org. Just click on our research and scroll down a little bit. You'll find two reports on racial extremism in the military. Okay, great. Well, thank you for